Photography is often called the universal hobby. It is a means of creative expression within the reach of people in all walks of life, and it speaks a language that everyone can understand. How does photography impact our lives and the world around us? It's hard to imagine what life would be like without photographs. Sometimes in my classes I'll ask students to think about what it would be like to see the, a photograph for the first time. My name is Kim Manchester and I am the photography instructor for Portland Community College. The first level of the course is 140, which is beginning digital photography. And through that, typically, we're just getting students familiar with the tools and how to look at photographs, understand their meaning. What is it about her? What's the feeling you get from her? And then also, hopefully, to be able to communicate as artists through photography, too. A lot of people feel like you have to be either for film or for digital and, and you know, never the tween shall meet and a lot of my students choose digital because they have access to it and with this increased access you know there's that kind of disposable factor with the image but there's also this sense that if you make a mistake it's okay and I think as far as art goes you have to be able to royally mess things up in order to get anywhere right and you have to be willing to do that. Um, film, there's a lot of investment in making it right. So I think as an artistic process, I really like how digital gets people to take risks that maybe they wouldn't normally take with film. What makes a good photographer? I would say if what your intention for the photograph is comes through clearly to the viewer, I mean, I think you could, you could say that that would be one of the ways to define a good photographer. Um, I think for me, the whole point of photography is to elicit a response, to, to lead the viewer down a path but not really tell them which one to follow and not really tell them where they're going. Um, and, and that's really what makes the difference between a snapshot and a piece of art. Even if they look the same, one of them is going to influence the viewer in a, in a way that is differently just by placing the subject somewhere else or having something not in focus, you know, it's about what you tell them, but it's also really about what you don't tell them. Do I have a favorite photograph? Um, I do, and it's, it's mostly because this is the photograph that really inspired me to do photography and to, to kind of follow the path that I have with my own work. Um, it's a minor white photograph, and it's very diminutive. It's, it's very small, and um, there's just a picture of a, a reflection coming off of a window in the afternoon with a white curtain flowing. And it was one of those reflections that you get when, you know, maybe the sun bounced off the next door house and came in through the window and somehow it created this orb of light that was reflecting off of the wall. And there was something about that that was just really magical and, and that's always stuck with me. The most rewarding thing about teaching is seeing a student start somewhere and wherever they are and, and then seeing that improvement just in the short amount of time that I have them. In some way I was able to provide an environment in which they felt like they could take the risks and they did it on their own. It wasn't me pushing them, it was me just facilitating, you know, me just kind of creating the space that they could do it and feel safe doing it. But I think that's the most rewarding thing is to really see the stuff that they do because at the end of the term you're tired, you're spent, you're ready to have a break, but then you see what they do with it and that just, you know, rejuvenates you and it, it fills you back up and you're ready for more, so.